Hi folks, so tonight it looks like it's going to be clear and I thought I'd image um, an object that I've imaged many times actually but never really been that happy with the results and that's Messi 31, otherwise known as the Andromeda Galaxy. One of the other reasons for uh, choosing this target is I want to check out the Sharp Star 61 EDPH2 um, because there's some thought that the LX Stream filters might be masking uh, the colour aberration uh, in, in that particular telescope. As I said when I was originally reviewing that telescope, I think the best thing to do is to, to actually try it out on a, 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 a broadband target just to see what the situation is. I know that, that uh, an issue with the quality control and the lens cell of that particular telescope uh, has been found to be an issue recently. So, uh, as I say, uh, let, let's have a look at the end of the session and, and see what we, we can discover. I'm Dr Ray and welcome to Astrogadge. So it's actually a really clear night. Uh, the only problem is there's, there's come quite strong winds. We had a really bad storm here recently. It's blown down one of the big trees in the garden here. But still a, a bit windy. Um, so though we've got quite a nice clear sky, it is blowing the occasional cloud over, which is making things a little bit difficult at times. But let's let. <laughs> Let's just move on and see what happens. Okay, so that's everything more or less set up. But before we start imaging, um, in the next few minutes, uh, we're getting a visit from the International Space Station. So it should be appearing from the um, west, out past the top of the house here. So with a bit of luck, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to capture that. Stand by for action. Okay, wasn't that fun? Now back to Andromeda. Snow 
complete. All right, so we're um, on frame eight. I'm doing 120 second subs. Um, so far, so good. Um, the guidings can't, uh, a bit sporadic uh, because of the wind and the odd cloud that is blowing over, but generally it seems to calm down a little bit, touch wood. Um, let's just keep it running and hope for the best. And uh, I'll be back in a bit. In between the uh, the odd cloud, the scenes are absolutely excellent. Otherwise, so it's just, nothing we can do about the wind. We just have to persevere. Uh, at the moment, it's it's actually improving a little. The uh, the clouds have of um, been blown over, so we've got we've got a really nice patch of good seeing and clear sky. Okay, we've gone down to quite a respectable 0.56 um, which is good uh, so let's see what the sub looks like when it comes in hi folks well not a bad night um, it's worked out not too bad I think and well I need to check everything tomorrow obviously uh, but despite the wind um, I think we've got some good data actually um, the Andromeda has now gone behind the house, so there's not much point in continuing. So I'm just going to leave it here, and uh, we'll catch up tomorrow when I do a bit of processing. So, see you later. Here we are in PixInsights, uh, the, the day after the imaging session. Uh, and what I've got here is the integration of, I think it's... It's an hour and 15 minutes worth of subs, 120, the, the subframes are 120, 120 seconds each. Now I've not done any processing on this at all, I've not tried to remove any gradients or do anything other than just integrate it and integrate the subs just to have a look at something that's effectively unprocessed but that this is the, this is the integration. And at first it looks not too bad but once we zoom in, oh my goodness, we can see lots of halos now normally I don't mind halos but that's haha, that's simply not right and some of the some of the stars that are actually red uh, are showing evidence of it uh, here for example so clearly all is not well <laughs> now just uh, by way of a bit of comparison and I do realise it's not an entirely fair comparison, uh, but it's, it's mainly for my benefit, uh, is uh, an image, an integrated image of the, the Bode and uh, Cigar galaxies, uh, which I took earlier this year using the Esprit 120 uh, millimeter apochromatic refractor. Now, obviously it's a, <laughs> it's a much longer focal length than this, uh, but uh, again, it's it's unfiltered, and this is the integration um, without any processing. And uh, as I say, although it's not a fair comparison for me, at least it gives some sort of idea of what one would expect from a a well corrected uh, well corrected apochromatic refractor. So uh, again, if we if we look in here, we can see all the the uh, things that are going on that shouldn't be. Whereas and the spree mm, pretty much minimal if any a little bit here is arguable chalk and cheese isn't it as i say keep saying it's it's maybe not an entirely valid uh comparison but nevertheless you, i think it gives 
well, particularly me, an idea of the extent of the problem. You just simply wouldn't expect this even in an apochromatic uh, refractor, e even at that, even at that price point, which isn't that cheap actually. But you know, it, it's you wouldn't expect perfection, but it's still. I think I, I don't. I, I don't believe that's intolerant. So here, here we are again. Um, this time, looking at um, individual sub-exposures uh, <laughs> with our dodgy comparison, um, and uh, I get well, they, they both happen to be 120 second subs, but uh, as I, as I said before, different telescopes. But nevertheless, you can see in individual subs, whilst it's not not as obvious. Uh, it's still there and you know even in stars like this where it's minimal once you integrate that problem is going to be exacerbated quite considerably uh, again if you look at this telescope which appears well corrected um, apart from some dodgy star shapes it's you're, you're simply not seeing that so yeah there is a problem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to email sharp star uh, and explain that uh, since I, I bought this telescope, uh, I've pretty much used it exclusively for uh, narrow band imaging, and this being one of my first uh, uh, attempts at broadband imaging with it, uh, I've discovered what appears to be considerable chromatic aberration, which I feel is not right. So I'll keep you posted on the uh, response I get. Let's see what happens. Hi folks, well I contacted Sharpstar uh, by email uh, and I explained that I've been using the scope primarily uh, on uh, emission targets uh, using the L-Extreme filter and it's only recently that I'd uh, been imaging a, a broadband target and I noticed what I believe to be uh, unacceptable chromatic aberration and I sent them uh, a, a copy of the image which, which uh, I've shown you along with proof, proof of receipt and I, I got a really a really nice letter back saying um, first of all they apologised for the that the product didn't uh, satisfy me um, they've, they've checked the image and they agree that uh, there's a problem there and, they, and they're going to send me a, a, a new objective lens because they believe that will solve the problem um, the only caveat being that they've uh, they've run out of, of these uh, cells and in the middle of making a new batch so they, they intend to get one to me within the next couple of months and basically are quite apologetic about it they've got my details they'll contact me once that's shipped uh, they, they say that they put uh, user experience and product quality first every time and customer feedback is important to them so good on them hats off to Sharpstar I say um, it's, it's not often you you get customer service like that, so um, obviously um, you know they're they're looking after their their, their 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 customers. So you can't really ask for any more than that. I'm very happy with the response, um, and once um, I get the, the the lens unit, I'll I'll fit it and uh, I'll let you know how I get on with it. Just like to say a big thanks to our man in Japan, Quiv the Lazy Geek, uh, for doing all the legwork and finding out about uh, you know the mechanism for um, claiming this replacement unit um, it uh, shows you, just shows you the power of social media um, so um, yep yeah, I'm quite happy with Sharpstar's response in fact more than happy and um, it, it's good I'll continue to use the telescope for uh, emission objects uh, as, as the, the, the filters seem to um, mitigate the chromatic aberration that you, you see in uh, unfiltered objects. So, back to the present. In the meantime, I've, I've decided to go ahead and just process it anyway and just see what we get. So here's the final process version in all its uh, aberrative <laughs> glory. Um, uh, during the process of processing, I've managed to mitigate some of the effects of the 
the CA. But, you know, it's still there. But, you know, it's a shame because actually I really, really like this telescope. And, um, you know, as, as I said before, even at this, the, this price point, you'd still expect a little bit of better performance than that. Back when I did a review of this telescope, uh, I'd used it exclusively for uh, narrowband imaging using the L-Extreme filter and the one-shot colour camera. And uh, as, as I said uh, at that time, I could see no evidence at all of any bloating or uh, chromatic aberration at all. Um, and I did say at the time that, you know, to be absolutely sure, um, I would need to actually uh, do, um, do some imaging on, on a broadband target uh, unfiltered, which is, of course, what we've done now. Speaking to some people and having a think about it myself and, and indeed from some of the comments you guys have sent in, I get the feeling um, what's happened is that the L Extreme filter's working, <laughs> doing its job. And I think what's happening is that, or I think what happened is that the, the because the L Extreme um, has a very, very, well, a, a narrow bandwidth uh, and allows certain wavelengths of light through, I get the feeling that this particular wavelength of blue light uh, is being filtered out. Um, so effectively what it's doing is it's filtering or masking the chromatic aberration that's present in the telescope. And to me that seems, seems the most likely explanation. Um, again, if you've got any contrary views, please let me know. But um, I get the feeling that that may well be the case. Uh, I'm glad that I actually performed that check eventually because it has uh, flagged up there as an issue with that telescope. I'll put this up at the end anyway so you can you, know, you can have a look. <laughs> folks that that's it for this session I hope you find it interesting and useful um, I'd just like to say a big thanks to everyone that's subscribed um, it's uh, it's really gone beyond my expectations but so thank you very much uh, and if you haven't subscribed uh, please uh, uh, and you like the content then please consider doing so uh, it doesn't cost anything it just means that you get heads up in any uh, future content that I may uh, produce so again thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed it I'll see you next time and remember keep watching the skies watch the skies everywhere keep looking keep watching the skies